Welcome to the Antonio Parkinson Project. I am Antonio Parkinson. Today, Diddy did it. Did it. Diddy did it. Five reasons that black people don't seek mental health care. Representative Jasmine Crockett hit Margie Margie Taylor Green with those Fifth War Bs. (laughs) Also, TikTok teacher goes viral. He gets fired. And lastly, we're going to talk about Alicia Franklin's rape case with Cleota Abstin and how it affected the Eliza Fletcher case also. And we got Black Girls Doc in the building. Yeah. Not Black Girls Rock, but Black Girls Doc. We got the Black Doctors in the building. We'll be right back. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. Welcome back to the Antonio Parkinson Project. I am Antonio Parkinson. And we are live right here with our wonderful, wonderful co-host. And ju- wait oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just, <laughs> that's not, that's not yeah, Angelica. She don't look like Angela. Mm. A little yeah. bit. Oh, no. <laughs> I guess who came from behind the camera today, oh. DJ Kojak? Oh, come on, man. D- DJ Kojak, hold on, hold on, hold on. Miss, make it happen. That's uh, wait talking. a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. I told her she was going to look like a deer in the headlights when she got on, when she got okay. on the show for the first yeah. time. No. <laughs> right. No. Look at it. Look at it. Like look. I'm ready to argue here. I'm ready to give it to you. I'll be, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. Introduce yourself to the, to the wonderful public because they want to know who you are. Oh, uh, well, I'm Nichelle, a.k.a. Shell. And I am. Uh, step up to that microphone. Oh, There's a nerve that I was talking I about, Coach. The, there you go. <laughs> the producer, the everything, okay. the runner, and all the behind the scenes work of the Antonio Parkinson Project. It's Nichelle Smith in the building. Give it up for you. Yeah. yeah. First timer. I heard that first timer. DJ Coach, scratch it up for him three hey. times. No, four times, Coach. Four. four times. Wow. Did y'all hear that scratch? Hey, doctors, did y'all hear that scratch? I heard it. You heard it? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, love give, my doctor. give yourself some therapy later on, but yeah, we heard it too. Yeah, we heard it too. DJ Kojak, hey man, it's a lot going on. It's it a is. whole lot going on. It is. You know, we're, we're, we're um, you know, of course the month of May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and the entire month of May, we are educating people on the importance of mental health. And yes. we are excited. Thank you to Alliance Healthcare. Let's yes. give it up for Alliance yes. Healthcare. Yes. Who is making it happen. And we got the black doctors in the mm-hmm. building. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> Nichelle, with her nervous ass, she says, <laughs> this is a good time for y'all to like, subscribe, <laughs> and, you know, hit that subscribe button. to say it earlier. Right. So, yes, <laughs> it is a good time for you to like, follow, subscribe, share, tune in, comment the whole time. Yeah. Right yeah. Now. Yeah, thank you for that, Michelle. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. She's yeah. our therapist. Oh, always. <laughs> oh man, she well, reels back in. I feed what? them. That's what y'all <laughs> that it is. Food is therapy. Food that is that love. that is right. She she is our uh, ADHD corraler mm. in 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 this space, right? Yes. Because you know when you're dealing with folks that that is uh, you know that's all over the place, you need somebody to. Speaking of, did he do it? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that, exactly, exactly, See? right. Did, you're right. Did he did it though? Did, actually, did yeah, you know, you know. So, so, you know, honestly, a lot of us, a lot of us, myself included, were shocked to see yeah. this video drop. Um, you know, and I saw it uh, from CNN. CNN dropped it at one mm-hmm. o'clock mm-hmm. today, yeah. and um, a video of Diddy assaulting Cassie mm. in the hotel. Um, you know, uh, she uh, looked like she was trying to get away. Yeah. Allegedly. Right. Let me, let me make sure I put that in there. Yeah. Allegedly. It looked like she was trying to get away. And, uh, he came out of the room down the hallway after her with a towel yeah. on. Yeah. Which, and, how bad do you have to be to be beating somebody when you naked? I'm just. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, that, that part. Yeah. yeah. And so he, um, uh, you know, from allegedly, allegedly. according to the video allegedly, I saw, yeah. Uh, looked like he he was beating her, and then he was trying to drag her back Thanks. to the room, yeah. 
And then it looked like she might have got away again, and mm-hmm. she was on the hotel phone and came back out and hard too, yeah, and 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 was throwing a vase at her, and you know, mm-hmm. the, and you know, and, and that's you know that's incredibly, incredibly uh, disheartening, incredibly sad to see, and you know, for any any individual, uh, any woman, you know, to go through to yeah. to you know be a victim of it's traumatizing. Yeah, I noticed he grabbed that bag. He was after that bag first. I don't know what was in that bag because he grabbed that first. That's a really good so point. So she almost made it with all the evidence that she, I don't, allegedly. Right. She almost made it out with whatever she was trying to make it out with. But did he, um, you know, he, he put a stop to that. You know, you know, and apparently it, 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 you know, and this is just my, my amateur eyes. I'm glad we got the experts here. My amateur eyes, um, it, it looked like this was not something new. Mm-mm. Like this wasn't a, 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 a first time incident. Yeah, it's too comfortable. It, it, it's it too comfortable. Went on to say that she left and came back because she just wanted it to be peaceful. She didn't want to cause no problems. And the hotel workers begged her to to go home to leave the situation, and she and she stayed. So this mm. was not new yeah. to her at all. Yeah, got you, got you. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and you know that's that's unfortunate because, and we'll ask the doctors about this later on about the fact that um, you know some people uh, they do go back, you know, for many many reasons. Sometimes it's financial reasons. Sometimes it's is uh, security. Sometimes is 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 a whole a whole host of other. It could be a whole host of other reasons. And and you know what's interesting is is people always you know ask or say, well, why didn't you just leave? Mm-hmm. Right. And 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 so, you know, and it's it's easy to say, you know, why don't you just leave when you are not uh one of the people that are that are uh, victims of, of those situations. And so, you know, I'm hoping that that, you know, um, you know, this trauma that that Cassie is has dealt with, I'm hoping that she'll be able to see uh someone like our wonderful doctors that we have in the building mm-hmm. that we're gonna yes. be bringing up. Uh, later on, you know, and 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 start to receive some healing from this. Definitely, she gonna yeah. need it. You gotta think about how she feels right now, seeing it, reliving it, and Relive. having the whole world see what happened to her right now, and she's living through it again. Yeah, she's living it publicly. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. You know, uh, we were talking also from a law enforcement standpoint, and Lord, I'm hoping that uh, uh, Lacanti is keeping the time because I ain't got no sense of what time it is on this on this segment. <laughs> I also wasn't right, right. But 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 we also talked about from a law enforcement standpoint. You know, I, you know, I, while anytime you you're dealing with uh, uh, some type of domestic violence, you know, of course, you know, we want to make sure you know. Of course, there there needs to be some accountability. But this to me, it rises higher than. Uh, just domestic violence. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I Diddy has done something to yeah. to tick yeah. somebody off yeah. Yeah. to where you, I think we're yeah. about to see the floodgates yeah. unleashed on 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 your your boy yeah. Puffy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. That makes sense because if if there were so if he's been doing this for so long, there had to be a lot of powerful people protecting him and now nobody is Nobody wants anything to do with him. So whatever he's done, it's like, hey, we don't want no parts. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. It's a wake-up call. It's definitely his wake-up call. It's his turn. Yeah. You know, You know. interestingly enough, also, uh, you know, when, when we're talking about situations like this, you know, especially, you know, people, uh, you know, in, in uh, I don't want to say that magnitude because they know better than anyone else, but... Mm. Uh, people that are, you know, in the in the in that light, right? Especially that entertainment light. It's not just a matter of of them, you know, going to jail because of domestic violence, but you're talking about massive losses, right? You're talking about losses of endorsement endorsement deals, you know, um, um, and other, you know, large uh, lucrative uh, business deals. It, mm-hmm. it even goes as far as you know. You, you, I, I, we said last week. I think it, when we talked about the Drake and Kendrick Lamar, right. you know, beef, right. yeah. you know, it, it, it's not just a rap beef on, on, on vinyl, but the loser loses endorsements. Mm. You know, when you're not popular anymore, you know, right. these deals right. go right. away, right. right? And so, you know, I think a lot of this is gonna gonna hit uh, Sean Combs, you know, in the same manner. Yeah, I've been saying it, and, and it's like it's across the board. We got, you know, everybody's beefing. 
and bringing out all these allegations. So a lot of a lot of our folks are going down. And like I said, I said them this your folks. Those ain't my folks. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm gonna say this here. Uh, a lot of Kojak's folks are going down. That's what yeah. he said in the show. Yeah, yeah. A lot of you know, a lot of info, you know. Um, yeah. a Work lot it out, of... Kojak. Work it out, DJ. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you gotta look at it like this here. He's a success story, you know, and a lot of people looked up to him. So right. everything right. he did that was positive gets diminished. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, at that point, that's what we doing to everybody that makes it to. A certain plateau you know? yeah and he's a mogul you gotta you gotta you gotta commend the man for what he did but all this come down at just like this you know it's, it's not a uh, coincidence yeah but but how many people got hurt in the process mm. of him doing right, what he right. did right. though? and i'm gonna say I'm, I'm not defending no i do not man it's horrible what he did but i'm saying is when you walk into when you walk when you're ushered into something that's already wicked Mm. And they bring you in and they teaching you how to move in this situation. Uh, I'm not saying he's a victim at all. You know, I'm just saying most of our people, when they come in, they think they can do it until they tell them you can't do this. You know, you know, but it's, 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 it's power unchecked. Right. You know, you know, you, you get there this you power and you, you surround yourself with people. Yes, people. Fake. Mm -hmm. All Fake. the way around, man. Look, and, and I can tell you emphatically, apparently my power ain't unchecked because Nichelle, my assistant, she ain't no yes person. She tell oh, me no. all the damn time. Right, right. She told me, and I don't even, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She don't even work for me, and she told me no. She told you no? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, We're right. not going to do that, Kojak. So, like, you, okay. I'm so, a nice person. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I see, look, I don't know if y'all seen this cartoon, and this is where our ADHD kicks in, y'all. So y'all, 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 uh, uh, give us some therapy as you, as you watch it. So there's this cartoon out there called Veronica. Mm -mm. Right, I don't know if y'all seen it. If y'all get a chance, just pull it up on TikTok or wherever you pull it up. <laughs> the shell is Veronica. Okay. Right, and you, 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 I have watched it. I will agree. I own Veronica because not gonna play with Veronica. Right, the shell, the shell, the shell is the serious one yeah. in a bunch. I mean, I mean, we can be laughing, joking. The shell have a stern face. Her face will be looking like this. <laughs> yeah, but I, but go ahead, Nichelle. I have a resting bitch face, and I don't apologize for that. Uh, <laughs> I get tired of the, what's wrong? Smile, please. No, I'm not going to do it. So get my face and that's it. And that's what I love. Hey, authenticity is the key right here at Black Market Strategy. Yeah. You did not play, baby. Yeah. Look, you got to come with it, come authentic. We can, we can sniff a fake a mile away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so yeah, man. So so I think we got we got about another minute left in the segment. But, um, you know, we're going to have the doctors up next. Also, you know, we're going to talk about um, Eliza Fletcher's murderer. Mm. Received 80 years for another crime. Right. For the rape of Alicia Franklin. Mm. Alicia Franklin's rape went unnoticed. But we'll talk about that in the next segment. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. We'll be right back. Hey, grab a bag with a roll up. Grab your cup and let pull up. They didn't want us round at first, but now they act like they know what. Hey, but they show love. Yeah, we show out when we show up. I don't even do the lift of this. Might make me throw up. But we talk up. This the after party. Shit grabbing on my body. White girl got a bottle in the club. And that going all this. Talk up in a wreck the party. We shit brought out everybody. No, we got our Hey y'all, it's Michael Kaya and it's the Antonio Parkinson Project. I'm on. They have fun around here. They got chicken and everything. If you really want to get the word, know what's going on in your neighborhood, in your community, in your blackness, you need to tune in to the Antonio Parkinson Project. And ain't even in the projects. Okay, so tune in. We love you. Keep God first. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. Welcome back. Welcome to the Antonio Parkinson Project. I am Antonio Parkinson. Give it up for our guest co-host in the building. Nichelle Smith is in yeah, the yeah. building. Yeah. Holding it down. Oh, we're breaking the ice. Over <laughs> oh, here breaking the ice. Look, I guess, I guess her, her deer in the headlight moment is over. Yeah, so, so you, yeah. You, you, you in there now, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, we here. I'm in the water. You threw me in the pool. I ain't had a chance to swim. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> DJ Kojak in the building. DJ yeah, Kojak, yeah. scratch it up for him four times. Bam, bam, bam. Damn! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Did you hear that scratch in the shell? I absolutely heard it. Okay. That's the what I'm doctor about. is in the yeah. building. Yeah. Give it up for Dr. Wait a minute, hold on. It's not Dr. Towns. It's Dr. Towns Hill. Give it up for the doctor. Y'all give it up for Dr. Towns. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. 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 So look, so welcome 
to the Antonio Parkinson Project. We are honored to have you. You know, we're proud of you. Thank you so much. You know, I, I know, I know. We it. just met five minutes ago, but we are proud of you, sister. Yes, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, so tell us a little bit. You know, before we get all the way into the segment, tell us a little bit about why did you decide to get into mental health? Okay. Well, I, I wish I could tell you a, a very sentimental story, but I don't have one. Mm. Uh, so I well, went. To, actually, I went to college to be a neurosurgeon. Mm. Um, and my my father at the time was working at the VA, and okay. he arranged for me to have um, an internship during the summer with the neurosurgeon. Okay. So I went into the operating room and. Um, they, they were prepping. I was excited. You know, first time being in the OR, I felt like this is something I wanted to do. Um, but he made the first cut and I hit the floor. That was the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized it's probably <laughs> not the career for right. me. Right. So I went back to school and I was like, I, I still want to be a doctor, but not that <laughs> not type that of doctor. Right. Um, and so at the time I was taking intro to psychology classes mm -hmm. and I realized you know, at that moment, my brain works in storytelling. Mm. And so I memorize things when it's told to me in a story and I'm able to kind of put the puzzle pieces together versus kind of memorizing things, mm -hmm. you know, like med you'll go to medical school. And so I switched my major to psychology and mm. um and haven't looked back since. So mm. you were you self-diagnosed yourself. Pretty much. Wow. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah. So you're in a great place because we tell stories all the time. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's awesome though. Uh, thank you for doing what you're doing, and 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 we mean that. Yeah, yes. I mean, I think I speak for much needed, team. much needed. Yeah, yes. and and definitely not enough of us. Yeah, and we were just talking about that. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, only about two percent of psychologists are um African American. Mm -hmm. So, um, we have a lot of work to do as far as recruitment, education, mm -hmm. um, in regards to um making people aware that this is a needed field for people of color. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's needed because, uh, one, because we need to be in there, number one, but, but, but also because of the huge stigma that's attached to mental health in our communities. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I, I will say that it's getting better. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as um, difficult as it was, you know, several years ago, because I think the media has made mental health the kind of a household name mm -hmm. now. And so um, I'm very excited about that. I'm very also very excited to see so many African-Americans and people of color utilizing services, which, you know, was never done before. Right. Um, my background is really in corrections. I started in corrections. Oh, really? um, yes. I was Work, an extra. 201 for 12 years. You did. So, yeah. you <laughs> For 12 years. Well, you beat your life expectancy <laughs> over there. Man. Oh, less than, less than, less than. That's, that's home away from home for me. Um, really? Yeah. 12 years, though? Yes, I've been oh, in corrections for 12 now, years. Perfect yeah. for this role that you're in at Alliance, right? Yeah, I would hope so. That's why they chose <laughs> yeah. me. So we'll her see. Teeth in <laughs> So yes. you say after that anything is easy. Yeah. No, anything, anything, but exactly. And that's what I was just <laughs> about to say. Like, um, these are the same people that we see in the community. Yeah. They just so happen to, you know, have a bad situation. They end yeah. up in jail. But when they go out, like we're gonna see them in the community anyway. Right. So they're the same individuals just in a different uh, circumstance. But you know, let's 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 dig in the in the weeds in it with that a little bit because you you're one hundred percent right. You know, one of the interesting things uh that the uh commissioner of corrections told me in my state representative role is 72% of the inmate population is on mental health meds. Mm -hmm. 72%. Right. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. I'm going to say that every show this month, you know, because that tells you what kind of crisis we're in. Absolutely. And it also tells you that they are housing those that have mental health challenges in our jails and prisons. Absolutely. And and then the 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 we're going further in the weeds. Then the fact that we did not allow for um the Affordable Care Act to, mm -hmm. you know, take place in Tennessee, those same individuals are uninsured. So Absolutely. they depend on safety Medicaid. net uh facilities such as Alliance and so on and so forth. And it and, and it, as much and as good work as good the, of the work that Alliance does, still not enough alliances. Mm -hmm you know, to satisfy the amount of people that are out there that are dependent on the safety right. net, you right. know, for, or the uninsured. So, so what happened, what the um, commissioner of correction said is, you know, when we, when they, when they're released from prison, we give them a 31 day supply of their meds. Well, shit. What happens on day 32? Right. 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 That's what 
you see? Well, we see them before right. then, you know, because right. most of the times they come right back right. Um, mm -hmm. before even the 31 day supply um, or 30 day supply ends. Um, and that and that's something that's frustrating, especially if you work in corrections, mm -hmm. um, to not be able to um, have a wraparound um, plan for mm -hmm. when they are released. Right. Um, I think we do the best we can. We work with, um, in, in corrections, and that now that I transition, mm -hmm. um, we work with agencies like Alliance. We work right. with a, a lot of community partners to make sure that we give them the best chance of, you know, success after they leave corrections. Right. But again, you know, there's this is a societal problem. Yeah. You know, it's not just about the medication and, you know, getting them to therapy. If you go back to the same environment, there are societal issues that impact your mental health as well. Yeah. So, um, it, you know, I, I think for a lot of the mental health professionals right now, and I, I can speak for myself, I'm frustrated mm -hmm. because these are things that we've been saying for years yeah. and no one listened or right. took the time to hear us right. that we were saying this is a crisis many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, but but I'm thankful that even now people are starting to hear that this is definitely a crisis in mental health. Yeah, yeah. You know, Nichelle, I'm so glad you're here, and and because I knew DJ Kojak wasn't going to have my back since Angelica's not here, right, and you right. know, and, and talking to our guests, and uh, I'm so glad you you've asked so many questions yourself. But but since you, why are you Ooh, thinking about the them? Let me let me let me ask this though. So, uh, Dr. Townsville, mm -hmm. you know, you came in here, you know, like bam, bam. Bam, I, right? I, I and bam. You know, Dr. And bam, walk, Dr. Yeah. Townsville came in. Dr. Townsville is a little bad in here now. And so I'm just thinking now, if I was an inmate at 201 Poplar, man, and I'd, I'd be playing crazy if I wasn't. I shouldn't have said it like that. I'd be playing like I had. So I needed some therapy. Right. right? right. So I could get in there with Dr. Townsville. Dr. Townsville, did the inmates try to holler? Well, listen, I am who I am. Uh, well, that's what I'm talking about. I, 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 I like to put it on, you know. That's what I'm um, And I, I don't think any of I, I don't care where I am, that's not going to change. Um, so you said they, they going to holler, huh? But, I mean, well, but not on, just that. It's not the that, but, I, but this good. is what I will say. What would you say, Doc? When you carry yourself in a certain way uh -huh. and you put out a certain energy, okay. that energy will come back to you. Okay. So... Yes, I I think any woman working in corrections got catcalled, but I think they knew that I was a woman who carried herself with respect and they gave it back to me. Right. So I was never, you know, disrespected to the point where people were, you know, that made me feel uncomfortable. Right. Um, because there were a lot of inmates where they heard someone catcalling me mm -hmm. and they would say, uh-uh, that's Doc. Don't right. do her that don't, way. Don't, don't like, come at yeah, her like that. Come at her like that. Yeah. Yo, Doc. Yo, because they knew I was there right. to help them. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so I think that was in itself a level of respect mm -hmm. that was warranted because right. they know that I'm there to help them. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. Let's talk about let's talk about uh, Alicia Franklin. Okay. Alicia Franklin um, was you know, I don't even have to say allegedly now because the guy's been sentenced mm -hmm. was uh, raped by Cleota Abstin. Um, and let's go back a little bit before before that. Before that, you know, I had a bill in on the on the house um, in the house finance committee that said that uh, TBI is to test these rape kits mm -hmm. within thirty days. Right, right. The the Tennessee House and it came about because of the Alicia Franklin case and and the cases before the backlog of uh, rape kits. Well, the Tennessee House decided that wasn't their priority to finance to fund, so it didn't pass. Alicia Franklin's uh, rape kit didn't get tested for over a year. Oh, well, right at a year. Uh, but amazingly, amazingly, it came back right when they were trying to find Cleota Abstinence for the murder of Eliza mm -hmm. Fletcher. Mm -hmm. It amazingly came back on the day they found her body or right around that time. And it was sadly, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and and now today, as a matter of fact, uh, he was sentenced to 80 years yeah, in prison. Mm -hmm you know, for, for the rape of uh, Alicia Franklin. Mm -hmm. And he still has the case of Eliza Fletcher that's going to be coming up. Uh, you know, uh, w w w walk us through, and, and you're the perfect person for this, actually, mm -hmm. too. You know, walk us through um, the mindset uh, of an individual like a Cleota Abstinence. That... Right. Um, one, I will say that I want to start by saying I don't know him. I, I did not interact with him when it, when he was um, at the Criminal Justice Center. I, d I don't know anything about his history. So I want I want to start there first. So nothing that I say is personal right. toward him. Um, and just in general, we're talking about people who um, some people will call either sociopathic mm -hmm. or uh, psychopathic, depending on you know if there's a, a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's hard for me to 
kind of get in the mind of an individual who would do so much mm-hmm. harm to to someone else. Right. Um, that's something that is hard for me to fathom, mm-hmm. um, particularly a man um, violating a woman. Um, uh, but sometimes you have to understand a person's story, not not for empathy, but um, to try to understand like what is really causing them to tick that way. Let me ask you, you know? this: Can mm-hmm. a person like that be rehabbed? Um, if it's possible, mm-hmm. it's possible. Right. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't discount anyone. Yeah. You know, I, I think that, you know, if a person is willing mm-hmm. um, and they're open to change, I think anything is possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about what you had a question? I do. How okay. likely is it that he experienced sexual trauma in his past? Um, again, I don't know specifically, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but I can say that um, sometimes we do see patterns of behavior, or some type of trauma. Um, from the perpetrators, um, the people who have committed crimes. Um, and, and I will say this, um, particularly in Memphis, a lot of people are dealing with trauma, mm-hmm. um, particularly um, experiencing mm-hmm. uh, the n- high number of homicides, the violence that we see in our city. It, I, I would say a lot of us are traumatized and may not even know it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, so what, let's talk about in, in, uh, Alicia Franklin. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what's, what, what does she need? What do you, what do you think that that will help her heal. Right. I think any victim, not just her, mm-hmm. um, needs support. I mm-hmm. think they need um, a lot of emotional, social support. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's difficult for someone who has been violated to even tell their story. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes our society um, does not really, st- you know, sometimes we don't support the victims. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think even even in this P. Diddy situation, I, mm-hmm. I heard some people saying, like, I guess I can believe her now. Like, That's now? Just because right. you saw the yeah, video? Right. And yeah. so sometimes that, that causes people to kind of go into their shell. But mm-hmm. so as a victim, definitely a lot of emotional, social support. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, I, I have to say, you know, I, I, I've had a chance to speak to Alicia Franklin uh, multiple times. And, you know, we did we we both did uh, Dateline interviews, uh, um, you know, while, you know, these things were being uh, talked about. And she is a courageous mm-hmm. woman. You you know, you think about it and, right. and you may even know, you know, have an idea what these numbers look like. But imagine all the people that's not reporting. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And, and just think about the bravery and the courage that it takes to report it. Right. right. So I applaud any victim who comes mm-hmm. forward um, to to report something like that. Right, right. Have you talked to her since the Eliza? Like, does she feel like she went unseen until the bigger case got involved? Like, how did she feel about her case not being newsworthy until the Eliza Fletcher thing? Have you talked to yeah, her? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I did talk to her about, uh, you know, we talked on Dateline, you know, about that, you know, and, and you know, the, the race implication, you mm-hmm. know, it's hard mm-hmm. to ignore it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's hard to ignore the fact that, you know, her kit didn't get tested until they needed to get a hit on this man in order to lock him up, in order to hold him for the Eliza Fletcher case. Right. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and amazingly, you know, they got the rape kit turned around and got Eliza Fletcher's DNA test turned around within a few days, mm-hmm. you know, a, a, a week or so. Right. And, you know, and, you know, but the, but the, the race implication of it is blaring. Because there was a citewide search, a citywide uh, need right. to find out what happened man, for that huh? versus mm-hmm. right. we did not hear about right. the rape. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and for her, that may be traumatizing too, yeah. you know, yeah. for her to feel like she's not important, mm-hmm. you know, enough for the city to give that type of effort in making sure her crime gets solved. Right? Mm-hmm. And what does that say to every other black woman mm-hmm. in, in a majority black city about, you know, if you are sexually assaulted, you know, the effort that's going to be put forth to making right. sure that your assailant is, is brought to justice right, right, right. and off the streets. And, you know, you know, and, 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 and even, you know, just a little bit further, you know, you think about that, you know, if a person's been traumatized like that and that person is still out there on them streets, you know, they're, they're mm-hmm. can you You're imagine living looking life like that? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. You're already scared, mm-hmm. but to know that that person is still near. Does, it, does a trauma like that, could that trigger a uh, deeper mental health um, issues and challenges for yeah, a person. Yeah, usually that that that's a type of trauma we'll consider a PTSD, post um, mm. traumatic stress disorder. Right. Um, could trigger depression, you know, um, anxiety. Um, you know, I've seen people who they've already they were already suffering from other mental health illness, but a trauma can also throw you into a psychotic episode as well. Mm. So um, definitely want to 
you know, be able to provide services as quickly as possible, because the longer that you go without services after a trauma is more difficult to recover from it. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dr. Oh. Townsell in Ooh. the building. Y'all give it up for it. Dropping that Thank knowledge. You. Dropping Thank that you. knowledge. I'm telling you, you came in here looking like a superstar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, but look, uh, in this next segment, though, uh, we are going to be talking about bleach, blonde, Ooh, bad, man. built, butch bodies. Period. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so y'all stick around, stay, hit that subscribe button. We'll be right back. You're watching Antonio Parkinson Project. <laughs> What's up? It's Elise Neal. You are watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. Stay tuned. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. Welcome back to the Antonio Parkinson Project. I am Antonio Parkinson. And May is Mental Health Awareness Month and all month long. We're going to be talking about mental health and getting the word out to educate our friends and families on the importance of good mental health. We also want to remove the stigma from the black community when it comes to mental health. It's okay to get that therapy. Ain't that right, Michelle? Absolutely. As someone who has been in therapy multiple times, I, I, I tell everybody to go get it. Oh, I didn't know that. But you said that. <laughs> oh, okay. sorry, right, right. That? That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, right. I, I, I swear I, I, can, I can use some therapy. I got these good doctors. I might try to try to lean on them a little bit. DJ Kojak, yeah. scratch it up for him four times for therapy. Man. Bam, bam, bam. I need a little therapy too, man. Right. So, you know, help me right. out too. <laughs> Dr. K is in the building. Yay. Give it up for Dr. K. Hey, hey y'all. No. Look at him. Look at him. Hello, hello. Dr. K, don't come in here acting shy and stuff. Look at him. Oh, you know I'm not shy. Right. We I'm know each other. Hey, I'm bring the couch. Hey, bring the couch. Right, right. Did I'm you kidding. not see my couch over oh, there? there Look go. more closely, please. Just like the stretch. <laughs> right, right, Exactly. Right. It's the same place where oh, your turntable is. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Come on, yeah. man. Dr. Yeah. K, thank you yes. for joining us now. Now, look, me and Dr. K, we go a long, long way back. We do. You know, we work on multiple fronts. You know, we, we're mm -hmm. always, you know, uh, fighting for uh, youth sports and correct professional boxing correct. in the city. Yes. Uh, amateur boxing in the city, you know, and, uh, you know, and uh, also, you know, you know she, can, she can help you get your mind right, too. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. all of that. Dr. Mm -hmm. K, yes, tell sir. us, well, how, how do you... First of all, you know, we're in the, on this show also uh, with, with yourself and, and Dr. Townsell. Look, throw up the quotes with it. Townsell. <laughs> no quotes. Right, right. We're, we, mm -hmm. want, uh, we want to celebrate, you know, uh, black women in the mental health field, you know, uh, yes. because it's vitally important to us that, you know, that, that we're seen. Yes. And, you know, of course, you are um, a, you know, uh, I, I would say, uh, a role model for a lot of young young sisters that are coming up that may want to get in the mental health field too, mm -hmm. you know, or in the medical field. Period. You know, we need you. We need you all over the place. How'd mm -hmm. you get into it? what? What? Tell us how we got there. And I'm glad you asked me that question because represent representation is very important. Right. They have to see us to even know they can be there mm -hmm. as well. And my story isn't um, like glamorous or anything. I actually had graduated from undergrad and I was mm -hmm. sitting at the graduation not knowing what I was going to do at all. Uh -huh. And uh, the person who was speaking happened to be the vice chancellor for academics oh. at the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. And his okay. wife was a school psychologist. Mm. I'd never heard of school psychology. Mm -hmm. All I knew about was clinical psych. Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted to mm -hmm. do. So, of course, my mother, Catherine Streeter, being the great guidance counselor mm -hmm. and slightly aggressive human being she was. <laughs> uh, she a black mom. Yes, exactly. She pushed me to to the front to speak with him and tell him about me and how I'd graduated cum laude and I had not been accepted into their clinical psychology program. And she wanted to know right then why. And of course, he was very afraid and didn't know. And he said, well, not sure, but if you make it to UTK, 
By Monday, I will give you an interview with my wife. Wow. And I interviewed with her. I got the position, and the rest is history. Wow. Shout out to mom. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, don't take so much. No, not, yeah. even, not even a little bit. And, and, look, if you, and if you know these street assistants, you know they chips right off the block because uh, they're the same way, man. They, they ain't going to sit back in the back and chill. And I mean, clearly we talking boxing, then they don't play. They got them hands. Right, 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 right. Well, you have to fight all the way for the right things. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, well you know, so, so what do you do now? So now I'm in private practice okay. as a school psychologist. Okay. I work with nine different schools across Memphis mm -hmm. City. A lot of schools that people think are with Shelby County are actually charter schools. Oh, and we were talking okay. about that right before we came on, mm -hmm. talking about how we wanted to actually make sure that we also partnered with some charter schools because they're kind of interwoven in with other schools like Fairley yeah. and Hillcrest. Yeah. People mm -hmm. think they're still with the city, but they're not. They're yeah. They're public charter yeah. schools. Chief and school districts. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So so speaking of schools, yes. you talk about a perfect segue, right? Oh. So, so you know, there's this teacher mm -hmm. that's trending right now. Well, he's the former teacher now. Yeah. Okay. He's trending. Okay. And, you know, he was uh he put, posted some video uh -huh. of the, the students in his classroom taking his hair down. Taking his hair down. Yeah. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. And the shell looked like she bite at the bitch to say something. So, Michelle, <laughs> go ahead. Okay, so uh, there was a TikTok teacher. He's in his classroom, mm -hmm. um, and he asked some students, some female students, to take his mm -hmm. hair down while he's doing some work, and he goes live on social media while doing this. Mm -hmm. um, and so the topic of conversation has been, was it innocent content? Did he just make, you know, a mistake there? Or is there more to it? Is this possibly grooming of these young girls? Because it starts with, oh, can you take my hair down? And then it goes to, oh, can you give me a massage? And oh, can we spend a little time mm -hmm. together after class? Because these students are calling him bestie. Um, mm -hmm. So are there lines that have been crossed? Well, let me ask this question. So, mm -hmm. so Michelle, if I, if I take your hair down, am I grooming you? Are you grooming me? No. Oh. Is it in a Appropriate, possibly. Yeah, there's a I, professional I dare, line that's crossed right there. Right there. <laughs> there's a professional right. line that's and, being and, and crossed. You made my point. You made yeah. my point exactly. So, is yeah. where where does that where does that uh, land? If you okay, mm -hmm. if you were in one in mm -hmm. fairly, mm -hmm. and you walked in on this, what what would your thoughts be? Um, I would immediately ask him to step out of the room, mm -hmm. and I I like to ask questions mm -hmm. and seek understanding before I do anything. What question would you ask? I would say, hi, so tell me what's going on. Context. Oh, an open-ended question. Yeah. An open-ended question so he can answer in whatever way he wants to answer. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really matter what the answer is because I'm going to say, stay right here. <laughs> Mm. Let's just stay right, right here. Mm. Let's stop all of this Ooh, right now. Yeah. Yeah. It was very I mean, nice. I mean, I mean, not nice. A smile to Mama Streeter. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. We're gonna stay right here. Yeah. Right. She ain't smiled since. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's stay right here mm. and let's just stop all of this mm -hmm. and switch to something else. I'd mm. probably go in, take over the class, mm. make some phone calls because regardless of what he meant, mm -hmm. now we have overstepped some boundaries, just the physical touch, mm -hmm. just even what disease, that, he may have something going on in his hair. They mm -hmm. may have something going on with their hands. Oh, you don't that. know mm -hmm. how they're looking at it, how he's looking at it. A lot could be going on. Mm -hmm. And so even though you may love your students and you want to be close with them, you have to know where your boundaries are as an adult, mm -hmm. as an educator, as somebody who can offer therapy. Oftentimes, children may even substitute their love for others onto you. Ooh. And when you feel Ooh. that, you have to stop it. Man, and you have to go to somebody mm -hmm. else. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you have to do that. Yeah. So, so I, I don't think any cancer should be a teacher then if that's the case. I'm a cancer. <laughs> and I know, I know how nurturing and affectionate I am, you know. Well, that's um, why they have training. They do. Yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. you go to school. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even no, though I, I know can, people think they can just step in there and be a teacher, but no, no you really no, cannot. I can be a teacher anyway because I don't have the patience because, you know. Yes, some, you have to have patience kid, and classroom you know, management. Me, man. Yeah, I'd be on TikTok for smacking the shit out of somebody's kids. So. Yes, you'd be teachers, in jail. Teachers right. mm -hmm. have emotional <laughs> regulation. Yeah. Yeah. All of those okay. good things. Yeah, the doctor's over there. She's like, okay, get them to. Get them to. You be, sure. I can see you. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'd be fired. I'd be mm -hmm. fired. I'd probably be 
TikTok viral too, but for a different reason. Little, Hopefully, we would counsel you into another area. Yeah, firefight. We which would. Is what you, I did. Maybe see, you yeah, did yeah, the I right need, thing. I need to run into burning buildings. That's more appropriate <laughs> so for, for me. Coaching, because mm-hmm. right? tough mm-hmm. love. Yeah. You don't have to to be with the students. You can just tell them, hey, go run some laps or something. Teach them some exercise. There we go. Is you that what coach. it is? You could coach. I can it coach, takes yeah. all different kinds. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can coach. You could coach. coach. Yeah, can That's coach. the yes. difference. There you go. Yeah. Of yeah. mentoring. Mm-hmm. So, so, let me ask a question. Let me ask a question. What? So, yeah. Hold on. What? Uh-uh. Coach, coach, we get yeah. coach. Yeah. Coach, I got, <laughs> a, got question? a question. No, I'm a uh-huh. let him have it. Let him have it. No, I'm saying. Okay, you're in the school system. Yes, I am. And the kids, younger and younger, are smoking marijuana mm-hmm. and you got all these different strands of marijuana out there you got all this stuff that you don't really know what's in it mm-hmm. can that be attributed to some kind of uh chemical imbalance because it's chemicals in some of that stuff mm-hmm. can that cause a chemical imbalance and actually have you know throw off a, a child's like i said chemical mm-hmm. in your brain will that make them can it trigger could that Actually, hey, can them. you get the question now, brother? I'm just trying to understand. Look, you trying got to rush it. Look, Nichelle, I'm trying to question. throw you an alley oop, and you, uh, you know, I'm just yeah, because that's because that calls mental illness. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. Well, let me start off. A chemical imbalance in the brain. They on it. Still asking the question, huh? I got you. <laughs> I'm trying to see. I, I need to know. I'm going to try to get my question in so I can. Uh, no, if you need to stop or start or. Okay. So yeah. let me start off by saying I'm not a representative of the marijuana industry, mm-hmm. nor am I a proponent, mm-hmm. nor am I opposed to it. Okay. Right. But I will say this. There's already enough going on chemically in most people that are okay. imbalances that you don't want to mess up. Right. So you certainly don't want to add anything to that. And children have minds that are growing mm. and they're changing all of the time. Yeah. So you don't want to add anything into that mix that wasn't supposed to be there in the first place. Mm. And oftentimes mil- mental illness comes from a chemical imbalance in your brain. Mm. That's what I'm getting at. That's, okay. why, that's what I want. That's yes. What I want. So, but I don't want to say marijuana is the cause of that. Mm-hmm. Because there are some people who are actually born what? depressed. Mm-hmm. They're born um, with the ability to become anxious in mm-hmm. situations. Mm-hmm. And it's not their fault. Yeah, It's the way your brain operates. Mm-hmm. I like to say you have a brain injury. Mm-hmm. Because oftentimes people will think about mental health in terms of are you tough? You know, um, are you do you have enough spiritual Mm -hmm. guidance? Um, You know, are you able to handle it? You have nothing to do with the way your brain operates. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Mm -hmm. it's a chemical imbalance Mm -hmm. that requires real medication, Mm -hmm. not marijuana, but real medicine. (laughs) Oh, that is real. You know, medicine from a doc doctor. Right. Let me be clear. I'm I'm not talking about I'm I'm not talking about regular marijuana. I'm talking marijuana with chemicals in it. But you know they're they're putting chemicals in the marijuana too. That's what I'm saying. I'm not talking about homegrown, just regular Oh man, they cut it with everything. Man. They spray mm-hmm. fentanyl and, and all kind of stuff. Right. But, uh, but so, Kojak, what was your question? I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> man, please don't ask you. Been, you've been Kojak. <laughs> right, right. Kojak's question lasted five minutes. It did. It I appreciate your right, question. It's the remix. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Right. Shout out to our guest. The remix. The remix question. The doctor appreciate my she question. Has, That's yeah, all that matters. Like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. So are people that have these chemical imbalances, are they just more likely to once get on substances and then become substance abusers? Well... I can't necessarily say that because I'm not a medical doctor, but what I have found is that oftentimes when we, because I work primarily with children, Mm -hmm. oftentimes when we find children who are vaping in class Mm -hmm. or they are smoking marijuana before school or after school or trying to do it during school, oftentimes they will have an undiagnosed disability. Mm -hmm. Usually what I found this year it's anxiety. Mm-hmm. So many kids mm-hmm. are coming out with anxiety disorders, especially after the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing a lot of children who are school phobic. Mm-hmm. Educationally, that would fall under an anxiety disorder, which educationally we call that an emotional disturbance. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. sometimes we may call it other health impairment. It depends on how it comes out in the wash. Right. Yeah. So yes. look, I got I to gotta ask this, and we might have to go over just a couple minutes, but 
one, there was there there's a, a, been a major uptick in in mental health challenges before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. So you know, I, I know a lot of people try to put it on the pandemic, mm-hmm. but what do we attribute this the uptick in mental health issues mm-hmm. with our youth to? I attribute it to mm-hmm. people becoming more comfortable reporting. Because we've always had people who were not right. You had that uncle who was in the attic, that aunt who was in the basement, that man across the street, that little kid you were looking at and saying there's something wrong with him. But nobody Mm. wanted to come Mm. out and say something's wrong with my baby. They need help. And they still don't like those titles. I don't want to get them tested because I don't want to label on my baby. Exactly. But they wanted the crazy check. It's not the, I don't even, they don't need the check. They need the support and the help. No, they wanted the check. But they just don't want the label because it looks bad or it makes you look like a bad Mm -hmm. parent. Well, I see that parents are sending their very best babies. They only have those babies, and that's who they're sending to school. Mm. So when you say your child has a disability, Mm. that hurts to the Mm. core. Oh, wow. And it makes so, you feel sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Like there's something wrong with them. Definitely. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. At least but what I what I focus on is saying these are your child's abilities, mm-hmm. even though they have this problem, strengths and weaknesses, as we all do. These are the things your child can do. And these are the things your child needs help with. Well, well give us give us five reasons black people don't seek mental health care. Give Number, me one. Give me one reason. We're going to go around the table. OK. One big reason is nobody wants their people to feel like their child is crazy. Okay, okay. Yeah. DJ Kojak. I agree. No. Oh, no. Angelica. Okay, well. Yeah, Angelica, we need. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Five, here we go. Reasons, five here we go. reasons black people Who, don't seek mental health. Here we go. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Because they, they feel like the child is playing or something is wrong with the child, so they just want to beat it out of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They, they like, they like yeah. quick. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, I, right. I had, I, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I messed up. Oh, okay. yeah, forgive yourself. <laughs> forgive yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle. Uh, mine is that they believe they can pray it away. That God's gonna take mm. care of it. That mm-hmm. that He gave us the power of prayer. That it's just gonna go away. Mm. And that's it. Um, that you need Jesus and a therapist. Yes, right. they pray for a good therapist. Yeah. Right. God mm-hmm. gave us medicine and therapy for a reason. We should use those resources. But they don't pray for that. They just they, they don't just pray feel for like that. you know mm-hmm. we lay hands on you know them demons gonna come out. Mm-hmm. You know, kids talking and seeing. And that's what it is. Talking it's and seeing. Demons. Oh, it's not going, a mental exercise. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, a it's a demon. Right. It's, mm-hmm. the, it's yeah. the devil in them. That's yeah. you know, ex- exorcism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me think. I, I would say um, one of the reasons that that they don't seek mental health care is because they just attributed, oh, he just bad. Mm-hmm. Oh, she just bad. Yeah. 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 And, 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 you know, and, and they, they look at it like that the whole time. The, them little uh, aces is starting to root and, and yes. turn into, you know, some little aces fruit trees, <laughs> you know. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, all of a sudden, next thing you know, this child, the little bad child became the shooter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then they have to go where she talked about. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. They yeah. start with me and they end with her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes. So give me, do this for mm-hmm. me as quickly as you can. Mm-hmm. Give me five reasons they should seek mental health care for their child. Well, number one, the child is not bad. I find very few children are bad. They usually have an undiagnosed disability. Mm -hmm. Number two, they need help and resources. Number three, they need to start planning for the future. Mm -hmm. Number four, they need to forgive themselves and forgive the child for that that behavior. And number five, they need to plan on what they're going to do once they get help and move on and become an adult. Man, Ooh, she rattled that thing. Oh, oh man. man. She didn't know about the question. How, she <laughs> didn't know how come you don't answer we like that? We had time to prepare. That's what I'm wondering. We still had a whole hour long. Right, <laughs> right. Y'all are giving it up for Dr. K. Dr. K. Yay. 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 Yeah, Dr. K, you have been absolutely amazing. We truly, truly appreciate it. Make sure you uh, let everybody know how they can uh, get in touch. You don't hold that because we're going to do it during the drop. Okay, we'll do, we'll do that. Yeah. Okay. So again, y'all, um, you know, we didn't get a chance to cover, you know, the bleach bond, be, bleach, bleach blonde, blonde, bad, bad built, butch, butch body. body. Please. Yeah. Period. Period. Jasmine Crockett, we love you. Just want you to know <laughs> yes. that. Come on the show.
Come on, Antonio Please. Parkinson Project. We'd Please. love to have you. you I know, want to be uh, here for that one. But, you know, uh, you know, we want to thank, uh, you know, the sisters, the uh, black doctors that are in the building. Yeah. Black girls, doc. You know, yes. we're excited to have you. And, and you know, and uh, we'll make sure that their contact information is available to us all also. Uh, so we'll make sure we put them in the drops and, and air those. And uh, I want to thank all of our guests. We want to thank Alliance Healthcare also. Again, all month long, we're talking about mental health, y'all. Mental yes. health. It's so vital mm -hmm. to us. We want to thank our sponsors again, Alliance Healthcare, uh, for um, uh, being part of this uh, great series of shows. I just was handed this note by my boss, Nichelle. Um, <laughs> she said, uh, um, oh, yeah, okay, Nichelle, yeah. You plugged so, the so, so Alliance Healthcare, I, I, you could have plugged it. Look, Alliance Healthcare, uh, they have uh, a resources uh, deal going on, Navigating Mental Health Services event on May 21st. And is this the one at uh, First Baptist Broad? Yeah, so this is going to be at First Baptist Broad, Navigating Mental Health Services Tuesday? on May 21st. It's Tuesday. It's, it's Tuesday. Tuesday. What time? 8.30 to 12.30. 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 yes. p.m. So pull up, you know, everything you, you can think about in regards to mental health services, you know, will be there and, and available. You can ask all the questions that you want. And it's free. It's free to the public. So make sure you pull up and uh, you get, you, you're going to be there, Doc. Uh, look, <laughs> Dr. Townsell. Yeah, look, hey, I might pull up now. <laughs> but yeah, make sure you pull up. Also, want to send a shout out to our mayor, Paul Young. Paul Young, yeah. you know, you're watching the show. Come back on the show, man. I'm saying nice way. Come back on the show, man. Got a you couple know, more got, questions, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. People ask me about the 75 cents. Oh. You know, so you might want to come on and talk mm, about that too. Look, 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 look. They are. Dr. Street is like, mm. Mm, let's talk Dr. Street said she wanted to be back for that show too. I'm a homeowner. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah, we got questions. But look, thank you again. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You've been watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. We'll see you next week. You're watching the Antonio Parkinson Project. Powered by Black Market Strategies.